The connection here is that when you add fluoridating agents to your drinking water, you increase the lead leaching in lead pipes and also in the brass lead fixtures within buildings in the city. And so what you have happening is with the fluoridation program, you have, um, is that you've got the lead leaching actually exacerbated, which may be causing the need for a lot more phosphoric acid to buffer so that there is less lead in the drinking water for the City of Toronto residents. And if you're adding phosphate or phosphoric acid, you're also putting in something that at the end of the process, this, the sewage treatment plants must remove, and that's the phosphate before it goes out into Lake Ontario. And so I'm just wondering if there has been a full look at the fact that um, the fluoridating agent, hydrofluorosilicic acid, is actually causing this increased demand for phosphoric acid. And if it is, if you're all concerned about costs in programs and effectiveness of programs and the, the chemicals that you're adding to your drinking water that are supposed to be effective, then I'm questioning whether there's really a full analysis of this and a, a full costing and if there are actual savings that could be made. CDC is quoted nearly somewhere, uh, nearly every day, uh, either in Australia, New Zealand or one of the other Floridated countries. Uh, little do people realize when they made that statement that it's not the whole CDC that said that, not the 20,000 employees with all the experts on toxicology, risk assessment, various disciplines of medicine that made that statement. It came from the oral health division, which is just 30 people, and they're all essentially, if they're trained at all, they're dentally trained, and their mission is to promote fluoridation. So. <laughs> Them stating from an agency or a department whose mission is to promote fluoridation, for them to say that it's the best thing since sliced bread is a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. And um, what we need, of course, is people from the CDC who have medical and toxicological qualifications to make a statement about this practice. But we never get it. All the statements from the CDC are from this oral health division. Now, as far as whether you trust me or trust them, um, I would say the following. Every single argument that I make is backed up with the scientific literature. I published a whole book on that with 80 references. Every single argument is backed up. And after three years of publication, there's been not one written scientific response to that book. So I would say the difference between me and them is I have science to back up my arguments. They have opinions. These endorsements that you hear about ad nauseum.